Good morning, boys and girls. I'm so glad you're listening in today. It is my goal to be a blessing to you. And to do that, I want to start out with a word of prayer. I'm Pastor Jackson with the Community Baptist Church. Thank you, Father, for your word. Speak to our hearts, dear Lord. Help us, dear Father, to be open to learn. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Do you like to hear Bible stories? I sure do. It's a lot of fun, and it's really neat when you understand why God has that story there. I'm convinced that the Lord has all the stories in the whole Bible to be able to teach his children and then to help people who don't know Jesus to be able to come to know Jesus in their heart. Well, today's Bible story happened just a, a few hours after Jesus was buried and he was uh, resurrected from the grave and then Jesus ministered to other people. If you have your Bibles, would you turn with me to the book of Luke? the very last chapter of the book of Luke, and the title of this uh, Bible lesson is The Two Disciples on the Road to Emmaus. You can see it there on the graphics that we have included for you. It's neat to be able to have these illustrations, isn't it? Well, there are two disciples. We've given the name of one of them, Cleopas, but we don't know what the other guy's name is. So listen with me, won't you please, as I read the story and then share it with you. And the Bible says in verse 13, And behold, two of them went that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem about three score furlongs. Do you know how long three score is? Well, three score, score furlongs, according to what all the Bible experts, and there's people who measure all these things, they said it's about a seven miles. Have you run your seven miles yet today? I know I haven't, but I plan on getting in some miles this week. Imagine that, they were going to take the seven mile hike. Well, they didn't have any cars, they didn't have any buses, and obviously they didn't have any animals to ride. So the Bible says in verse 14, and they talked together of all these things which had happened. Well, with this COVID-19, there's a lot of people doing walking. I don't know if you've noticed it, but I sure have. On my way home from the church, I drive by and there's people walking up and down the street and they all, you know, do the safe distancing thing. And a lot of them are doing this, talking back and forth to each other. Have you noticed if why you're doing something like walking or bike riding, if you talk to other people, the time goes by faster? And also you get to learn and know about them and maybe catch up on different events. And the Bible says in verse 15, And it came to pass that while they communed together in reason, Jesus himself drew near and went unto them. So this is where we're going to pick up with the story. Two disciples of Jesus, all right? Now we, don't, we know that they weren't the 12 close disciples, you know, Peter, John, Andrew, Matthew, but we do know that these two were coming along. And they were heading along to... Uh, this Emmaus Road, so they're coming outside of Jerusalem and they're heading uh, the seven-mile trip, all right? The seven-mile walk. Maybe you've got, you know, some kind of an odometer on your car or on your bike, or maybe, maybe you've got one, you know, one of those pedometers. I know my wife had one of those where you walk, it would keep record of it. And this is where they were doing. And then Jesus came up to them, the Bible says, as they were coming along, and they were talking along with the Lord, and the Lord uh, asked them some questions, and this is what we're going to look at today. May I ask you to consider something? Would you put your thinking hat on right now? Just go ahead, put it on the imaginary thinking cap. Would you put it on right now? Maybe you got a thinking ball cap or a thinking Jonesy cap or a, think, or a thinking uh, hoodie. All right, would you put it on? And when you put it on, would you think, what do you think that they were thinking when Jesus came up and started talking to them? Because they didn't even recognize that it was Jesus. Everybody who's read the story about what happened to Jesus before he went, before he went to the grave know that Jesus was beaten. And they beat Jesus with their hands, and they beat Jesus with whips. It was awful. And Jesus was not recognized by these two disciples as being Jesus. Interesting, isn't it? And the Bible says, and he said unto them, what manner of communications are these that ye have one to another as ye walk and are sad? So Jesus Christ recognized that their countenance was sad. Have you ever wondered what's going on in someone's heart and you wondered why they were so sad? I remember I went to the Ronald McDonald house to visit some of my family. And when I went in there, they all were so sad. And it was because my nephew was very, very sick. 
and they were all so sad. And they didn't even have to tell me that there was a problem because they were so sad. Give me your best sad look. Go ahead. I mean, they're really sad. And when you're sad in your heart, it shows on your face, doesn't it? If you're happy in your heart, it shows on your face. And so, you know, what is going on in your heart or your head shows on your face. And this is what was going on right here. That's another good thing for us all to remember, something that we can take away from this in the Bible lesson, that if you are going to advertise that God is working in your heart, all right, there's sunshine in your heart, then it should show on your face. Have you ever had a bad attitude and your parents said, wipe that scowl off your face? I remember one time I was talking to some young people. One of the young people told me they're having an attitude attack. I said, what in the world is an attitude attack? They said, well, you know, that's when you, you don't like something and so you're pouting, you know, you're just frustrated. You're all mad, all frustrated. Well, these guys were very sad and they were, up, they were upset. And so the Lord Jesus Christ asked them what were the things that they were talking about. And the one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem? Because remember, they just came out of Jerusalem. And so when they came out of Jerusalem, they were already all well-schooled. They knew what had happened with Jesus some three days before. They knew that Jesus had died. They knew that Jesus was buried. And now they were wondering just where, what's next? What's going to happen next? Now you know, and I know, that Jesus was resurrected and that Jesus had died on the cross for all their sins and that Jesus was going to minister for 40 days on the earth. But they didn't know. That's one of the advantages that we have. You have a younger brother or sister, and they don't know a whole lot that's going on. They don't even have a clue, right? But you know because you're experienced, and you have a lot more knowledge. And this was the case here. These fellas had a lot of knowledge and a lot of experience. And they said unto him, What things? And, they, and said unto him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which is a prophet, Mighty indeed were before God and all the people, how the chief priests and all the rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him. So there was a lot of information that they were sharing along with Jesus, and this was very important to them. And then they said in verse 21, but we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. They were looking for a champion over the hostility and over the Romans who ruled them, they wanted to have someone who just take them out of that captivity and give them freedom. You know, freedom is a wonderful thing, and it comes at a high, very expensive cost, very expensive price. And they were looking for someone to come and maybe, you know, cheer them on, help them. And when Jesus died, they're pretty discouraged about this, and the, they were very saddened over it. And so. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ gave them some answers that I think surprised them all the more. And the Bible says, Yea, and certain women also of our company made us astonished, which were early at the sepulcher, and they found not his body. So this is what they were communicating inside of there. And certain of them which were with us went into the sepulcher and found it. So remember Peter and, and John had gone in and saw that Jesus wasn't there. And so now they were questioning what was going about. And they were wondering what was going on. And then Jesus started explaining to them some things that they had not considered. Ought not the Christ have suffered these things that enter into his glory? This is what Jesus said to them. In other words, didn't the Lord Jesus Christ say that all this would happen? Didn't the Lord Jesus Christ tell you that this was what was going to come about? Didn't you realize that this was going to come about? Don't you see that this, was, that this is supposed to be the next part of the message of Jesus Christ? And so the Lord Jesus Christ uh, kept on communicating to them and giving them the truth. And this truth uh, was something, well, that was beyond their mindset because they never imagined that Jesus would come up to them and talk to them. And so then Jesus started explaining to them everything about what was going on and everything that had happened in the past to all the Israel people, how Moses was prophesied. That, uh, remember, the Bible says in the book of John, chapter number three, has Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. 
So Jesus explained that parallel, what was prophesied and what was going to happen. And when Jesus told them this, they still didn't realize it. Have you ever been sitting with someone and they don't have a clue what you're talking about? Then they say, well, why don't you come on in our house, the Lord Jesus, and if you come on in our house and you uh, come along with us, we would like to uh, help you uh, have a part with us. And, uh, and so they ate together and they took bread. And the Bible records for us that when they did, that immediately Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ was known to them. And Jesus was known to them as being the Son of God. Now, what do you think made them realize that Jesus Christ was the Son of God? I think it was when they heard him pray. When you pray, it gives a window of what's going on inside of your heart. Have you been praying? When you pray, do you just say the same prayer? I remember when I was in second grade that our second grade public school teacher taught me this prayer. The, the prayer, God is good, God is great, thank you for this food, amen. Oh, I had been growing up inside of a Christian home, and we always would pray to the Lord, and we would make up our own prayers. But the teacher had said this would be a good prayer. Well, there was nothing wrong with that prayer, and that prayer was pretty much something that all the second graders would pray before we would eat our lunch. Well, Jesus Christ prayed a prayer, and the prayer of Jesus woke these guys up when they all of a sudden realized, oh, this was God. He's right here with us. As soon as Jesus prayed that prayer and they were praying along with them, then they looked and Jesus disappeared. And the Bible says at that moment, they said to themselves, didn't our hearts warm? We say, didn't our hearts burn when he was right here with us? Why didn't we recognize him? And the, the scriptures record that was the very same thing. And uh, they wanted Jesus to be there with them. But they said, and their eyes were opened, and they knew him, and he vanished out of their sight. Did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us by the way? So while Jesus was walking with them, Jesus was talking with them, they thought they should have realized that, but they didn't. They didn't realize what was going on. And so, you know what? Now they didn't have Jesus in their presence to be able to talk to them. So guess what they did? They said, that's enough of that. We're go we are going to go back to Jerusalem and tell all the disciples. I mean, now that we know it truly was Jesus that rose from the grave, it truly was Jesus who is the champion over death, it truly was Jesus who's giving us all salvation, we can go and tell everybody else, and that'll be a great day for them. So they hurried up and, got, and started making their way down the road and wanted to go and get and find all the disciples. And when they got to the upper room, to tell all the disciples something interesting happened. Because they walked into the room, and guess who was there? The disciples were there, except, for, of course, for Judas Iscariot, who betrayed Jesus Christ, and Thomas Didymus. The Bible says that they came inside of there, and there were times that uh, they had not all been together, but they had been together. And why they were telling everyone, hey, guys, you won't believe it. Let me tell you something that's great. Hey, let me tell you. What, 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 what? And then maybe it was Cleopas that spoke. We don't know which one spoke out first. You know how somebody, if you've got a friend, that somebody always has more words than somebody else? And he explained to them how gee, they were walking down the road and how the stranger came up to them. Okay, well, what's the big deal? Wait, 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 wait. Let me tell you the rest of the story. And then all of a sudden he started telling us about Moses and about Abraham and told us all the Bible stories. And then, you know what he told us? What? He told us that Jesus was going to rise from the grave after three days being buried. And then we offered him to come and have some food with us. And why we were eating the food. We, before we ate the food, he prayed. And when he prayed, we recognized it was Jesus. And he vanished right from us. And I think just about that time, I'm not sure, but the Bible says that it says, and they came one to another, and the Bible records for us that as they went the same hour, returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven gathered together. And so Thomas Didymus had joined them at this time, and them that were with them, saying, The Lord is risen indeed, and hath appeared to Simon. And they told what were done in the way, how it was known in them, breaking a bread. And as they thus spake, they're probably just getting to a good good detail, and Thomas and, and Matthew and Peter were all sitting there listening, watching, and guess what? Jesus came right then in the middle of the group. How about that? 
How about if you're with 11 disciples and there's two other guys there, so you got 11, 12, and 13, right? Yep. And then all of a sudden Jesus appeared, 14 inside of that room, and Jesus didn't come through the door like they did. Jesus came right through the wall. Is that amazing? Of course, God can do that because God is all powerful. And that's what the Bible says. So Jesus, and Jesus, <laughs> now what would you say if Jesus just showed up in the room? You'd be a little bit afraid, because especially if you didn't know and recognize who he was. And so Jesus, the first thing Jesus did, and this is a neat thing about the Lord Jesus Christ, he's always about bringing peace to people. And Jesus said, peace be unto you. Imagine that. And then when Jesus shared with them that they could have peace, the Bible records that they were afraid and that some of them doubted. And so Jesus said, hey, Thomas, Didymus, look at my hands. Look at my side. And he wanted them to see that this really was Jesus. Because remember what would, be, what would be on Jesus' hands? Do you remember? Right? They put those spikes in his hands and they nailed them right to it. That had to be so painful. I mean, I've hit my uh, hand before. It was something that's sharp and cut it and it hurts, but never all the way through my hand. I hope you've never had an injury like that. But they nailed Jesus' hands right to the cross. And then they nailed his feet right to the cross. And then they took a spear and stuck it up in his side, the Bible says. So Jesus wanted them to understand who he was by letting them see that. How about that? So the disciples were full of joy. Yes, yes, it's Jesus Christ. He's risen. Praise the Lord. And Jesus Christ uh, then uh, took food and ate food right with these disciples. Can you imagine that? And, and so Jesus Christ, and I think it was broiled fish. Now, I don't know what kind of fish that they have over there in Jerusalem, but it probably wasn't one of those square fish sticks or those little, you know, those, those rectangular fish sticks or those little square fish things. I think it was probably like a fillet, all right? And Jesus Christ put it in his mouth, and he ate it right in front of them, showing that the glorified body is going to be able to consume food. And notice, it wasn't pizza. No, sir. Uh -uh, it wasn't a hamburger. It was fish that he had there. Significance of this is that some of the disciples happened to be fishermen. Yep. And so that would be something that they would have right there at their mealtime to be able to eat. So Jesus, the Bible says, opened up their minds so that they could understand. When God the Holy Spirit speaks to our hearts, it opens us up. One of the things that we learn about God when we understand his word is that he loves us so much and that Jesus Christ came and he died so that we could have salvation. And the Bible says that he rose again in three days showing that he is a champion over sin. He's a champion over death. He's a champion over the devil. Now, you can have Jesus as your Savior. Well, what can you take away from this part of the Holy Scriptures? Number one, always pay attention to what's going on. Don't get distracted. It's important. God may be trying to teach you something. Number two, always listen to the message from the Lord. If you're in a service and there's adults that are preaching or teaching, that's okay. You can get something from that, too. I think another thing is, number three, is when you pray, always pray to the Lord and pay attention in your prayer because God can show you much through praying. We should be a praying people. And by the way, do you notice that when Jesus Christ was in uh, Cleopas' home and they went there on the Emmaus Road, that they blessed the food? Blessing of God's food is important. Do you eat your food before you pray over it? I don't think we should. I think we should show that we love God by thanking him for everything that we consume, whether it be a, a bottle of water, a glass of Kool-Aid, a popsicle, Easter bunnies, uh, Easter eggs, right? Sure, even that stuff, if you eat that stuff, or fish, like Jesus was eating, so the Bible said praying. And something else, too, is that God's word will help you know what to do next. And boys and girls, if you don't know Jesus as your Savior, you should come to know him as your Savior so that you can know what to do next in your life and that you someday will be able to join God in heaven. Jesus said, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. He came to these disciples when they were walking and they were wondering, Hmm, I wonder what happened to Jesus Christ. Hmm, 
Hmm, hmm. And then there was Jesus showing them. And then Jesus Christ there in the, uh, with Cleopas prays to the Father and they recognize who it was. Then they run as fast as they can to get to Jerusalem and they meet the 11 disciples and Thomas, Didymus and others were all there before they hadn't all been there. Now they were there and then Jesus appeared in the room and don't you think it's interesting that Jesus let them start telling their story? We need to tell the story of Jesus to other people. We may not know everything there is, but we can know what God has shown us and we can share that testimony. So share your testimony. That would be something else you could take away too. Well, until next time, I hope that God's word really helped you. And I hope that you'll remember the story of the two disciples whose heart burned within them when Jesus was right there with them. And uh, you know what? They learned much from God's word. Are you learning from God's word? Let's hope that you will. And if you haven't been, you can start doing it even today. This is a great time to get to know the word of God and get to know more about the Bible and get to know more about a great Savior, Jesus Christ, the supreme Savior, the one who can make you be ready for eternity. God bless you, boys and girls.